you guys have um, shoe covers? We do. Okay, good. Thank you for coming out. Right. First thing I think we should see is on the left side of the house. Uh, because inside? left, that side. Outside? Or yes, outside. outside. I just wanted you to see the location of the gutter. Because, no, the bottom. Where the, uh, maybe it's, where the bird is. Yeah, because um, it floods there. It comes in through, I'm not sure if it's exactly there. You'll have to see there's one, two windows, and then, it, so it's between the two windows. So we need to figure out where the flooding is coming from, because there's flooding in the basement through that wall. Oh, in the basement? Yeah, so I wanted you to note that. So now we can go in the house. Oh, wait, there is something else up front. Yeah, so you might want to come back out there after you see where the flooding is to figure out what's causing it. So here, you can see these trees haven't been properly trimmed, and in like a big storm, they throw down a lot of branches and they're pretty dangerous. And one almost hit somebody, uh, I think it was yesterday afternoon. It came in on the inside, but they could easily, just as easily fall on the outside. So those trees need to be trimmed. And he did these last year, but the neighbor's been complaining about the, uh, these palm trees throwing branches down on his cars. And I'll take my shoes off here. Uh, now, uh, I wanted you to see... Yeah. Um, well, just peek around if you could. The, the air conditioning unit... Because you're going to want to see the outside. It's not covered either. It arrived smashed, like it's bent a little bit. So it broke the um, the clips on the cover, so the cover won't attach. And there's a central uh, AC unit, so there's really no need for this to be in the window. And it lets bugs through. So you can see the outside doesn't have a proper cover, nor does the inside. Thank you so much for... Proper protective equipment. I appreciate it. And when you're done looking at this, I'll have you just move out of the way so I can move the couch back so that you can get through. And there's the cover, so you can try to put it on yourself so you can see that oh, it doesn't... No, we don't. Yeah, I take your word for it. Thank you. And you see that light fixture there? Sorry, one second. This one here? Yeah. You see anything wrong with it at all? It's been cut in half? Nope. No. <laughs> That's the point. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Landlord and previous enforcement officer tried to say that I broke it. Because the, because the bookshelf is there. Okay. It's not broken. So can you witness that too, that it's not broken? It does not appear to be broken. It's hard to see the edge of it. I'm happy to move the bookcase so that I can get confirmation that it's not broken. Well, we're not here for... Okay. For, for if you can move, I'll move down. back, step outside for a second so I can move the couch out of your way. Now that you've seen the air conditioning. Uh, there you go. Oh yeah, please. Thank you. Did you lock it too? It's kind of a rough neighborhood. Oh, 
over here at the base of the cabinet, you can see that the, there's historic moisture damage in this, this, this uh, dishwasher cabinet on both sides. On that side, underneath the sink, and I'll change places with you. When you say historic, uh, you mean that was like that? It was like that when I moved it. But it's moldy. And I, either side. And if you could look underneath the sink, okay. I'll open it up for you. I've shot pictures already, so I'm not going to go underneath, but you can see where the debris is falling. If you look up towards where the, the faucet area is, what it is is the sink, this is not sealed properly, and this is not sealed properly behind here. So the water gets back there and is damaging the upper part of the cabinet there. And this is no longer an issue but because there is no stove anymore. But if you can see here, sorry, I didn't mean to encroach on your space. The oven melted the cabinet. This plastic? Yeah, it's plastic. It's Ikea. Oh, So it's not safe when they put an oven back there. I've got a checklist to make sure I don't forget anything. We're going to do the inside of the house first before we go back out. So were you able to see up underneath the sink? Yeah, yeah, you you stuck that. your phone under there so you could take a picture? Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, there was so much going on with the house. It was, you know, and then with all the um, construction, you couldn't look at everything at once because we had to move all the furniture from downstairs, upstairs, downstairs, and everything was all filled up. So now we've got a chance to move things around. Over here, you guys are taller than me, so you should see this better. What I'll do is I'm going to move out of the way because there's not enough room in the laundry room for more than one person, but I'm just going to video here. If you see where I'm videoing, this back window here, these back windows, they have a leak in storms, and it, it's moldy and rotten. Sorry, which windows are we talking the about? The windows to the right there. To the right. Behind the, the washer-dryer. Now my dog is in that bedroom, so I took a video of the running toilet. So I can show you that video if you like. The toilet doesn't always run, so I don't know if it... If you look in the corner, the far left corner, moisture comes out of there, and the right in the center, like the water will pool during a rainstorm. So you got both sides of the cabinet here? That's not just the pink side, it's the other side too? Yes. Okay. Let me grab my shoes because uh, the staircase is not clean. I apologize for asking you to do this, but the staircase has been soiled. And uh, so if you could remove your, your, your shoe covers and then put them back on because the floor is clean upstairs. Okay. I'm trying to, because this, this still hasn't been cleaned out since since they did the roofing. Oh, never mind. They did do this. I, I was mistaken. You can go back down. I forgot. I, I thought they didn't get this vent, okay. but they did. So you can go to the back door. You don't need oh yeah. You just, you. Oh, I should show you the video of the toilet first. 
Maybe go show you the toilet video. Well, I, I can't really use it unless we can see it. You need to see the toilet? Yeah, I mean, I can't. It doesn't cause... always do it. Yeah. Uh, let me grab my shoes, I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's something where we have to actually witness it to be able to lift it. I'll see if I can get it to do it. Okay. You can just wait right here. Okay. I don't know if it'll do it this time. You can come back to check on it and see if it's still uh, pipsqueak. Go back in your house. Go back to bed. He's friendly. Oh, I need to put this on outside. So we'll, I'll come back and check on it and see if it's still running after we go outside. Uh, we'll see if the toilet's running. Probably not. Just for the toilet? Yeah, there, there might be pictures I want to show you. I'll have to see, but... I have other shoe covers if need be. <sighs> okay, what I want you to notice, like, partly it's buckling, but... I want you to notice, it doesn't say garage here. You notice that? Mm -hmm. No garage. But it does say barn, yeah. which is that building that I don't have access to that was not included in the electrical inspection. And the sub panel for the garage is located in there. Okay. Sorry, I got a puppy. She brings that all to the staircase. So, so the sub panel for the, you're saying the sub panel for the garage is in the garage? And you no, it's not in the garage. No, that is called the barn. Oh, That's barn. labeled the barn. The, the garage, does, there's no, um, I have no access to the breaker. And that means that unbeknownst to me, I was paying the landlord's electrical bill mm -hmm. on his building that I don't have access to. Okay. But it also means I don't have access to the breakers if there's an emergency, like the other day when he shut off the electricity to my garage and I was stuck in the garage. So you can see here, there's a sub panel in the basement, we'll check. But also you can see that this doesn't fit properly, there's a gap here. I'll let you go in there and look at that. Have you made your landlord aware of all these issues? I've made code, at this point I've been working with code enforcement, not directly with the landlord because the landlord has been retaliating. I mean, he's very aggressive. He does things like throw roofing shingles at me and my dogs and I prefer to communicate through code enforcement. He just put that in, so he should be aware. He just did it. He just had a building inspection. So, as, as far as the paying electrical and stuff like that, that becomes a more a civil issue. issue. Yeah. But I'm just documenting with you. Okay. Yeah. But as far as inspecting it for safety, because it's part of the property that I rent, it needs to be inspected. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Is it needs to be inspected? Okay. Now this here, this um, this is not his property, but I it is a code enforcement issue, and I have called attention to it. Up here, I have photographs inside. That's filled with rat droppings. This is rat habitat. What are you and talking about in this cracked area? Or? These cracks, okay. yeah. And this, the, co the pest control guy said it should be removed because you can't maintain that. Mm -hmm. And there's rats and ticks. We had a dog just die here last weekend. And my dog died in March, possibly of a tick, il tick borne illness. Mm -hmm. So this infestation is a health problem to me. And if you peek over the fence over there, there's a swimming pool filled with algae and mosquitoes. Okay. So can you go look over there? Uh, well, I, I'm not allowed to take photos over people's fences. We can try to make contact next door and see if they're willing to let us in. I've got but, photos of it. Okay. I, I have to collect my own evidence. Yeah. But so, I, so, I've been complaining about that algae-infested pool for... Yeah. For, uh, 
To whom? To code enforcement. Okay. We'll check into that. And we'll, it, it, we'll see if we can make contact next door and see if we can... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of it. lot of issues with um, debris and stuff over there yeah. and rats. So this is your garage? No, that's not my garage. This is my landlord's, um, what do you call it, lattice. Mm -hmm. And the lattice um, is uh, attached to somebody else's garage without permission. Are you allowed to just screw something into somebody else's that building? That's a whole matter. Okay, but it's according to pest control, this isn't supposed to be here. Okay. It was supposed to be removed. Did they list that in their report? Uh, the pest control report? Mm -hmm. I have it on video. He didn't give me a copy of the written report. So we can verify, because basically we can hold the owner to whatever's in the pest control report. If, if he said it has to go, then we can tell the owner it has to go. But if it's not listed in the report, we can't really, it's not something that we really have a municipal code for. All right, but you do have a municipal code about the next door neighbor's building with the rats. And that's what I'm addressing. Okay. That's that's my concern is the, yeah. the rodent infestation there and in this back building here. And the pest control guy did talk about this here. You can see to the left here, there's a burrow. Um, right here, there's a, there's a rat burrow. And if mm -hmm. you look carefully, it's like right underneath the wood, you can even see rat droppings. Okay. So it's an active rat burrow. And there's holes here that rats could get into. Um, there's holes in the back. We'll go. If you look here, up at the corrugated roof, mm -hmm. you can see like where the undulations are. If you look on the inside, we'll go inside without turning on the light. There's supposed to be a piece of wood that matches the shape, like a puzzle piece, mm -hmm. so that you can block rodents and other pests from coming in. There's nothing there. And then when we go to the back, you'll see that the walls are also rotted out so that the garage is infested with rats. Oh, and uh, before I open the door, I'll let you look at the sunlight coming in through. As you can see, up there, where it all comes in. I didn't mean to crowd you. Sorry. Uh, I need to get back to that control there. Sorry to ask you to move again, sir. What, what was your name again? Alex. Alex. Nice to meet you, Alex. I think we spoke once before. If you could push the doorbell button, which is the garage door button on the right-hand side, and then watch this door. It has a, a catch. When it goes, we'll put it up, and then we'll put it back down. It's when it comes down, sometimes it doesn't close all the way, but when it, when it does close, it has a lurch, and I'm afraid that the spring could come loose and uh, hurt me but I'm more concerned that like oh out of 10 times maybe one time it doesn't close and you don't notice it and then it's open for rodents and stuff to get in as well now push it till it goes down that lurch and sometimes when it gets to that lurch, it doesn't close. So you can open it. We can go outside now. Now, see where those black shelves are? If you stick your head right back there, you can see sunlight coming in. You see the, there's big holes there where the rats can come in? Yep. The wood is all rotted out. You can see here that the wood is rotted out and he tried to like just screw boards up, but the boards are coming off, they've rotted too much. Here, um, they don't go all the way to the bottom, so the rats can just go freely in and out. And if you look here, there's insect damage. The trim like fell off and it was hanging for a while, but this next piece is ready to go. It, it, like it, all this insect damage and down here too, and on the bottom of the of the fascia, or the or whatever you call this front board here, it's all rotted out at the bottom so that the rats could get in. Then if you come over here, 
I'll let you take your pictures over there. Oh, those fall out of my pocket. Looks like. Right. If you go to that building right there, starting right here, all along the foundation, you can see that there's serious gaps, and he tried to plug them up inadequately with putting little bits of rocks and debris that he found. And like here, this wood is all rotted out. This needs to be repaired and replaced. Because this building is, those two buildings are just overrun with rats. And it creates a serious health hazard with all the rats running the property at night and bringing ticks and mites and, and fleas into the property. Did you bring this up to the pest control company? Pest control said they weren't hired to look at it, so they weren't allowed to say anything about this building. They weren't allowed to comment because it wasn't on their request. I just said it's a code enforcement. But I do have him saying, you know, he did say to me privately that obviously it's a problem and he doesn't know why it's on the request for him to look at. He said both buildings and the garage wasn't on his report to look at either. He only looked at the house. He did not look at the he wasn't allowed to, to write a report on the garage or the back building. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me check my, my list. A barn boat house, decayed holes, overrun with rats on the same electric meter, sub panel which controls the garage should have been included in the same inspection. Garage, members of walls or, or partitions or vertical supports that split, lean, sag, buckle to defective material or deterioration. Gaps all along corrugated metal roof, rotted walls, devoured by termites, framing, presence of rats due to holes in walls, floor and ceiling. Garage door lurches, often does not close completely, spring may become loose, shoot off. Adjacent building, guarded garage lattice, corridor of rats, they hide behind the lattice and enter through the holes in the, uh, in the garage, um, brings ticks, uh, premature death of two dogs, um, mosquito infested pool, gutters, you looked at that, let's see, living room, AC unit, you looked at that, kitchen, you looked at that, attic, bathroom, laundry room, basement. Now I do have extra shoe covers for you, so um, at the end, of when we look, after we look through the basement, I would like to show you the photographs of the basement after a heavy rain so that you can see how it floods. Okay. So, this is a sharp edge that needs to be addressed, but it's not a big deal. and go all the way to the back. We'll start at the front of the house. Starting right here in the front, you can see that plumbing has fallen out of its um, strap. Mm -hmm. 
needs to be properly strapped up. And if you want to go all the way into that room, I'll follow you. If you look around you at the wiring, that's knob and tube wiring. And um, it's supposed to be properly grounded or in a J-box. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not sure that that happened. And if anything is abandoned, like you see this wire here? Mm -hmm. Abandoned wire, whatever it is, is not supposed to be here. So any abandoned wire needs to be removed. Right up here. Yeah. So like this, it needs to be modernized. Like you can see the, what do you call it? The attachments are not, they're the original. They haven't been tightened up or secured or anything like that. It's all frayed and dangerous. Yeah. Okay. And that was something the building inspector pointed out and he was supposed to address. But because the follow-up inspection was on the cell phone, he didn't know that it wasn't done. Now right above your head there, if you look, See how that, that wire is sagging? And turn, like, back up. This? No. Back up. Notice how you have to duck because the wire here is lower than your head? Because of the, the well, it's supposed to be, it's not supposed to be dangling like this. Every three feet, it's supposed to be attached. So all 